Hi, I'm Bobby. I'm here at Iridescent in New York City, and today we're going to be naval engineers and build working submarines. What do we have here? We have balloons, scissors, and empty water bottles and rings. It's called a syringe. Yeah. Um, empty water bottles and plastic tubing. And some plastic tubing. Okay. What we're going to do is make the things in the submarine that can get air and fill with air, or get smaller and not fill with air. And it seems like you've discovered how to do this with balloons. Could you show us that? Okay, we're going to use exactly the same principle, but instead of attaching this directly to the submarine, um, because it would be silly to have the submarine underwater with the syringes on it, we're going to just attach it through a piece, a piece of tubing. And then the tubing will attach the syringe to the submarine. Okay. So, everybody should have two syringes, two balloons, and two little tubes. Now, I want to attach the balloons to the end of the tubes. How do you think we should do that? Um, you could just attach the balloon to the tube. How do you do it? How do you hold it on there? It seems like it's going to sort of flop off. Aha, you can use a rubber band. Okay, so you can use rubber bands and fold the band back and forth and back and forth until it's got a really nice firm attachment to that balloon. What will happen if those rubber bands are like super duper duper tight here? The air won't go through. Exactly, it'll squeeze the little tube and the air won't be able to spit through. Okay, so what was the point of attaching these balloons to the end of our syringes? Like, why did we do that? So we could attach the balloons to the sun. Yes, exactly. Now, here are your submarines. These are recycled bottles. You can use pretty much any recycled bottle that you want. The real submarine is, is pretty cool. It's able to control itself. It's able to surface. It's able to dive. But it's also able to change what's called its attitude, or it's the sort of angle if you're looking from the side. So if this is the submarine, a real submarine is able to go like this, or like this, depending on something. Mm, maybe depending on this. I don't know. What I want you to try to do is figure out how to attach your balloons to the submarine. Um, and I'll give you a big hint. It's a lot easier if the balloons are inside the submarine than outside. Attach them in a way that you're able to control that angle of the submarine. How did this come to the top already? Okay. Maybe we could just add a layer. A layer. A layer? What do you mean? A layer right here to stop this balloon from moving. Well, actually, maybe if you're able to hold that tube right where it is in the neck, then the balloon won't be able to really move back and forth. So how could you... Okay. Is there some way you could hold the tube in the neck? Maybe using some materials that are on the table already? Aha! Okay, so you've got one ballast in your submarine. And you get two ballasts. Remember, the goal is to make a sub that can point its nose up or its tail up, depending on how you, the captain, point. My submarine is good. It's looking pretty good. Let's put it in the water. Let's test it. Hmm. Now, does it float? Is it sort of always floating? Is it going up and down? What's going on with the submarine right now? It's Sort of going up and down. Sort of, right? So if I tell you, like, okay, Captain, I want you to put the tail of the submarine up and the nose down. Not bad. Not bad. And what if I say I want you to put the nose up and the tail down? Not bad. And now if I want you to totally dive. It's not really diving, though. No. Hmm. How can we fix this? Maybe we could let the water get in? Yes, we could fill it up with water, and I, I see there's some air in there. I'm going to try to let that air bubble out. <laughs> I think we'll still have a little bit left over. If we had a little deeper water, it could get all the air out. But even then, it turns out that plastic bottles, even when totally filled with water, float. So what can, what can we do to make this sink? Um, we could try a different kind of bottle. Mm, okay, but using the same bottle, what can we add to it? Can make it a little heavier. So we'll see. Weights. Yes, we're going to add weights. That's the next step. Once you've got a submarine that has your ballasts in there and your ballasts are 
well positioned and you're happy with how they're working, and you're able to inflate them and deflate them with air, then, if you, depending on the kind of bottle you're using, if you use the glass bottle, you wouldn't need to add weights. Glass bottles sink. And the focus on the light plastic ones, they float. And are there any other kinds of weights you guys would like to try? Rocks. Okay. How do you want to attach the rocks and the sleigh? You're going to plop them inside. Now, what's the first step to get your submarine all ready to, to go? Fill it up with water. So it's totally filled up there. Because these submarines are plastic, what if these submarines are made of metal? You wouldn't need to fill it. Nice. Okay, so this submarine can surface and it can die. Very cool. Or, this submarine has so much shifting weight inside of it that it sometimes gets a little messed up. How can we make this more stable? Add clay to keep it in one spot. That's true. Clay, it, it stays pretty still. That's right. Put the weights on the outside. Aha! Put the weights on the outside and we attach them somehow, then they won't be able to roll around. Ah, so you're going to wrap the nail in the tape. Interesting. If the submarine is like a circle, we're looking at it from the side like this, and there's no weight anywhere, how would it be sort of more stable? It could sort of roll around like this, and then the people inside would be at their desk. So, so in fact, real submarines have weights on the bottom to keep the bottom down, just like you guys are building. That looks like a pretty successful submarine. So can you point it nose up? Only. And can you point it tail up only? Nice. Not can you surface with the tail sticking out of the water more than the nose sticking out of the water? Um. Once you've built your submarine, then it's time to try to get to do tricky stuff. Become a really good captain. Almost there, <laughs> but it's it's just sitting there. It's not. Oh, now it's all the way up. Aha, uh -huh. very nice. Water. So that's called breaching the water when it sticks out of the water like that. Very nice. So a very good challenge, once you've got your submarine working, is you want to try to dive all the way, surface all the way, point your tail up, point your nose up. And another challenge that's kind of tricky is to be what's called neutrally buoyant. It's something that's not floating or sinking. So what is it doing? Oh, now? it's like in the middle. It's kind of just hanging out in the middle. So it's tricky to have very fine control. Now a real submarine, it's difficult for them to get neutrally buoyant. They can get close, but they can't get quite perfectly neutrally buoyant most of the time. I think I hear a leak. So let's, let's see how we can diagnose this. If I put this below the water and you inflate it, you see those little bubbles coming out from the neck there? What's going on? It's popped. Well, it's not quite popped. Not it's not tight. Right, so then you've identified a leaky connection. And if you make that connection more firmly by maybe tying the rubber band around it a few more times or using a different rubber band, then you'll be able to fix that leaky connection. There's a lot of water in the, yeah. in the tube. There's yeah, if you have a leak, you might end up getting some water in your tube. Like That's another sign. Just a couple of drips. Mm -hmm. Of course, it'll still work with a couple of drips. What if the balloon, instead of being filled with air, were filled with water? It would sink. It would sink all the time, right? Yeah. Because filling the inside of the submarine with water instead of water... Uh-oh. Really it's filling with water. <laughs> so I think there's you've a got leak. a leak in there somewhere, yeah, right? there's a leak. Rubber bands is the trickiest part of this. Let me find a, a nice, smaller rubber band. Making a nice connection between the balloon and the tube is the hardest part. Making repairs, fixing problems, improving your submarine is the way to do it. with everything we do is once you've built it, you see how you can make it better. So you're adding air all the way up to the surface. Whoa. There you go, nice. So it's surfaced, okay. Neutral. Neutral, neutral buoyancy. Is it? It's a fine balance, it's hard to do. You have to add a little layer, take a little layer out. I'm putting Gentle little adjustments, that's how you get there. Well done. If you can get your submarine neutrally buoyant, you're a very good submarine yes. captain. It's hard to do. Why does air float in water? Because it's less dense than water. There's no, there's no weight. 
Well, it's not no weight. Air doesn't have no weight. A vacuum, which is lack of air, that has no weight. But um, air compared to water, like a rock compared to water, which of those is heavier? The rock is heavier. So if we had a bunch of rocks and a bunch of water, what would float? Water. The water basically floats. The water pushes the rocks. I'm sorry, the rocks push the water up. So if we have air compared to water, which of those two things floats? Air. Why does that one float? It's lighter than water. Yeah, the air is less dense than water. We take this thing, like you're, you're swimming in a pool. You breathe out, you have less air in you. What happens to your density? You sink. You sink. Mm -hmm. And then if you're sinking in the water, that means that are you more dense or less dense than the water? Less dense. Less dense. Mm -hmm. more dense. If you're sinking, that means you're more dense. You're like heavier. heavier. And if you breathe in, take a deep breath in, just you're like lighter. the submarine can have air inside. You're lighter than you're not. It's, you're lighter than the water. Yeah, you're less dense than the water. You're all spread out, and you're taking up more space, and you're less dense than the water. Doesn't our boat supposed to have propellers on it? Okay, so does a real submarine have propellers? You bet. It really does have propellers. Um, we haven't added any propellers to ours. That would be a good second project <laughs> to add propellers to this thing. And actually, um, I didn't mention it, but the propellers and the fact that a submarine is able to push itself forward is an important part of the way a real submarine is able to go up and down. A real military submarine, if there was a problem with the bladder system and they were having trouble, for instance, surfacing, they could still push forward through the water and sort of change the, sh the angle of the fins on the side they're called control surfaces, to sort of push it up towards the top. Or, if there's a problem diving, push forward and push the submarine down into the water, just like steering a car, sort of steering it down. Our submarines have no propulsion system. They're not able to push themselves forwards and backwards, and so they're not able to use that trick. In a real submarine, yeah. how would they extract the air from the, the so a real submarine has these large tanks, these ballast tanks, that can either be filled with air or with water. A submarine can choose. In the same way that your tanks can take up less space and the water just fills the space that the tank was in, or the tank can get bigger and fill that entire space with air. So, in a real submarine there's a big tank, and let's say the submarine wants to surface. Is that tank filled with air or with water? Air. The ballast tank is filled with air, and then the submarine goes up to the surface, just like yours do when they're filled with air, they rise. Then the submarine says, okay, I want to dive, I want to go below the surface now. It lets the air out of the tank and it lets it fill up with seawater. Now the submarine is, it's, it's lower, it's below the surface, it's, you know, 200 feet down, and they want to go back up. How can they do that? What do they need to do to their ballast tanks? Empty the water. Empty the water and replace it with what? With but how could they replace it with air if they are themselves underwater? They're not near the surface. How are they going to do that? They could extract the air from the water. They could send a long straw up to the surface, but they don't, they're not able to do that if they're very deep. So what can they do if they're very deep? What do you think? Maybe they have like a big tool that, um, that pushes all the water out. Yeah, they basically do. So it's not exactly a big tube, but they do have large tanks filled with compressed air. The compressed air can be used to push the water out of those tanks. So it can take those water-filled tanks, push the water out, and now they're air-filled tanks. And what does the submarine do? It goes right back up. Now additionally, if they don't want to use the compressed air tanks, which are more for emergencies, they can get close to the surface, stick up a straw, and use a pump. And it'll suck air out of the atmosphere and pump it out of the tanks. That takes a little bit longer but it's less of an emergency maneuver and more of a regular surfacing maneuver. But if they're deep and they really, really need to go up, they can blow the tanks. They can like push water out of the tanks using compressed air. Push very hard, very fast. It's like a big deal thing. Why do you think we have submarines? What's the point? Because the submarines could discover what's down there. Yeah. Like find new animals. Find new animals and stuff? What do you think, Jen? For warfare, they, they, um, they hide under the water so so the, they can shoot the torpedoes to other boats, and they're like they're like soft weapons, so nobody sees them. They're like ninjas of the sea. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Submarines are like ninjas of the sea. The the submarines that are used for military purposes are really incredible weapons because a submarine, a modern submarine, can stay underwater for six months. Wow. Yeah, long time, long time without going up even once. 
They have power from a nuclear power source. With people in it? Yeah, with people in it, living inside for six months. They can stay underwater. During that six months, they could be anywhere in any ocean they wanted to go to. They can go under the ice cap in the Arctic Ocean. They can go all the way under. They can even surface up through the ice. So they can basically be wherever they want to be. And it's really, really, really hard to find them, basically impossible to find them. So, military submarines, like you said, are a stealth weapon. They are large, hidden things with missiles on board. Research submarines, like you guys were talking about, are really cool because it lets us learn about the ocean floor and all the animals that live in the water and all this stuff. A, a person can't go nearly as deep as a submarine can go. An unmanned submarine can go miles underwater. People just can't survive that environment without really strong protection. By the way, research submarines can go a lot deeper than military submarines because they're designed with a different purpose in mind. So military submarines, you think they're like super duper strong and they have all this metal. Well, they are. They actually can't dive nearly as deep as a research vessel, which is meant to study the ocean floor. Do submarines have trouble with sharks? I think uh, you'd need to be a pretty small submarine to have a problem with a shark because most submarines are pretty big things. So while, while I'm sure there have been instances of animals kind of getting close to the submarines and bothering them a little, if you were a shark and there was some like crazy steel <laughs> box with lights on it and like motors turning, you probably would, would look at it and then you'd think, mm, this is not a fight I want to pick.